Hey Sagittarius, welcome to the channel. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope y'all are doing amazing. Let's get into this live reading for the Sagittarius Collective. Only take what resonates. Leave what doesn't. Flip the rules if you need to. It could be past, present, or future energy or someone else around you. I am picking up on. I am going to actually do this reading in the style past, present, future. All right. I've already shuffled. Got some cards for you. I'm going to pull some tarot to clarify. And we're going to close it out with a message um, of advice from Spirit. Okay. So your first card, past energy, is different pages. Incompatible desires or perspectives. Okay. You could be dealing with a cancer I'm hearing. There could be religious differences, cultural differences, traditions, things like that that came between you two. I'm hearing there could be something about your education or like your um, career or what is the word I'm looking for, y'all? Like y'all in two different tax brackets, I'm hearing. Like somebody could be extremely successful and the other person could be not so much, right? <laughs> Maybe even entitled. I heard emotionally drained before I started your reading. I meant to say that when I started recording emotionally draining emotionally drained is what i heard okay some of you are dealing with a drama queen could be an aries <clears throat> or another fire sign leo aries sagittarius but strong aries here doesn't have to be but this is someone who just was spoiled entitled it says thirsty and causing chaos okay this is like the queen of wands in reverse the drama queen okay mean spirited a mean girl obviously if it's the masculine just make it a mean guy make it a mean man boy whatever okay um f boy f girl that's the kind of energy this gives me very jealous insecure entitled um confrontational arrogant aggressive loud absurd just a really absurd person that they keep a lot of drama going a lot of chaos and confusion goes on when you're dealing with this person. Emotionally draining, okay? Present energy, we have honesty. Relationships need trust. With receipts, proof, show me. Okay, I see what this is saying. Some of y'all will never repeat this past mistake. You have learned a lesson and moving forward, you like, you don't have to show me better than you tell me. I need receipts. Don't make promises to me. Yeah, I need, we need trust in relationships, but not blind faith, right? So you learned a lesson 222, which is on the timer. Okay, and the twos are all about union. So there could be a union coming in, but some of you are extremely adamant that people have to show and prove. I know that's right. Your um, future energy is respect. Respect your relationships, okay? And I'm looking at all these people here. I'm looking at a work environment. You could meet someone at work. Um, it could be a situation where you meet someone and you might be a little bit confused about whether you should date them because of the conflict of working with them. Also, this could be a person who works in an industry. Say it's a feminine. She could work in a male-dominated industry surrounded by men. Trust is going to have to be a factor here, but they are still going to have to show and prove. Or if it's a masculine, a feminine, a feminine could work around a bunch of masculines or masculine could work in an environment with a bunch of feminines. So we have love, adore, admire, and enchantment. I feel like there could be someone at work who's attracted to you. Look at that magnifying glass, right? This person is holding this magnifying glass looking at these people. There could be somebody at work who I feel like has their eye on you. You could be a part of a team or something like that. I just heard supervisor in my head. Hopefully it's not a supervisor. That's a major conflict of interest. <laughs> I mean, it happens though, so you never know. There could be Cancer Pisces, Scorpio here, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, Libra. I'm seeing uh, Cancer Pisces, Scorpio. Leo, Aries, Sagittarius, Aquarius, and Libra is what I'm saying. What's this drama queen all about? So you two weren't on the same page because they kept a lot of drama going. Okay, I ain't doing one of those now. Let's see what this is. We have the five of wands in reverse. Hmm. That can actually talk about bitter competition. It can be compromised as well. But you might have had a love-hate relationship with this person. It could be a Leo. I'm, get, I'm definitely picking a fire sign or water sign energy. Yeah, the tower, fire and water. <laughs> Scorpio and Aries along with um, Leo energy here. Look at all that fire, right? This person could be very attractive, but they could be very superficial. Again, insecure, jealous, all of that. Promiscuous as well, okay? With the tower being here. Some of you could have a lot of conflict about the way that this person spoke to you. I'm hearing. Also, I feel like there could have been some indiscretion, some infidelity with this person in the past. Show me honesty. Okay, well, this one wanted to come and this one. Honesty and receipts here. We have 
Six of Cups with the Eight of Cups in reverse. Scorpio and um, Pisces energy here. Cancer as well with the Moon being there. So your present energy right now is, I don't know if this is you or the other person, somebody you have fond memories with. This is all about nostalgia. Somebody can have a set of twins or be a twin. Um, or this could be your twin, like twin flame. Six of Cups talks about good memories, though. Reminiscing your youth, your childhood, um, place of remembrance from your, your youth. Somebody you have a lot of history with, okay? Um, it could have been extremely hard for you to walk away from this person. You could have given them a lot of chances. And this is why now you need proof. You need receipts, okay? Some of you also found, found out about something, maybe even still finding out things about this person right now. But the Eight of Cups in reverse can talk about um, abandonment issues. It can talk about having an inability to um, release something that you know you need to because of all of these memories. This is hard for you to let go. I feel you still care about this person. You still love them. Well, let's see. I feel like somebody new is coming on. Who is this? What's this respect? Somebody that's going to respect the connection. Oh, yeah. Somebody's trying to manifest you. You got the hangman and the magician. Somebody wants to change your mind about them is what I'm hearing. Some of you may not see this person in a romantic light. It could be a Pisces or a Gemini or a Virgo. We have the hangman and the magician, okay? This is someone being very proactive. Some of you, the reason why you may not trust this person is because the magician can represent a player energy. They're smooth talking, right? Someone very convincing because they rule... Um, they're ruled by Mercury. So the way they communicate can be very persuasive. You know, what is the magician? The magician is able to manipulate what you think you see, right? Even though, yeah, it's magic and it's beautiful and it's powerful and all of that, the alchemist. But the magician can also be somebody who uses sleight of hand. Emotional manipulation, verbal manipulation. They make you, they convince you that your eyes are seeing something that is really not. And so this is like you listening to your intuition here. Some of you could be like doing some research on this person with this magnifying glass being here. Maybe looking at other relationships they've been in, trying to do some research on them. But there is love here. This is someone who like checks all your boxes, satisfies all your needs, mutual respect, mutual trust, mutual love, all of that, right? It's the one. It's the person that you see as the one. It's actually the number one in the tarot. So January the 12th could be significant. February the, I'm sorry, January the 13th could be significant. The 1st or the 13th of the month, June the 8th, August the 6th, uh, May the 16th. Hmm. So the 5th, the 16th, the 6th, the 8th, the 1st or the 13th of the month. Oh, why do I keep saying 13? The 12th of the month could be significant. December the 1st could be significant. Is that is that still Sagittarius season? Yeah, yeah. Some of you could be born on uh, December the 1st. December the 6th, December the 8th, December the 16th, December the 5th. Okay, let's get a piece of advice for you. Sagittarius. Higher power. That's what you all represent, that spirituality. I was just talking about you all, I think, in the Scorpio reading. Go watch that if you're on a Scorpio Sagittarius cusp, okay? Because they talked about a new love coming in after going through a breakup with someone that you weren't compatible with. So some of you could be on the cusp. Watch both of the readings. They're significant. But I talked about this. It's the number four, okay? Now, what I'm picking up from that. The, the number four and the, um, what am I trying to say, y'all? <laughs> the number four in the major arcana is the emperor, right? But I'm reading it this as the hierophant. Um, I see it as ninth house energy, even though it's the hierophant, right? Sagittarius, you are the ninth house. And the ninth house talks about spirituality. It talks about higher education, some of you could be in school with someone that you're about to start dating, or you could be learning a lot of lessons right now. There could be a lot of travel in the forecast for you. But this card is all about spirituality. It's an innate gift that Sagittarians are born with. You just have almost like the sixth sense when it comes to your spirituality, okay? You're very highly connected to spirit, okay? So God is watching over you and your connections moving forward. And you are looking to the future here. Something is being illuminated. Pay attention to your intuition right now. It's very important because it's going to lead and guide you. Those are your messages. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.